Disclaimer. This video is only for educational purposes and not an investment or trading advice by any means. Any stock discussed is purely an academic exercise without any recommendation or commercial interest. Scientific investing as well as presenters may or may not have any investing or trading positions in the stocks discussed. During this video, we don't hold any responsibility for anyone's investing or trading losses. Please do your own due diligence or consult your financial advisor. Hello viewers, welcome to Scientific Investing and I'm with you with a new video. Uh, this is for stock analysis for one of the companies in logistics and energy sector, uh, which has created a tremendous amount of wealth in the last seven, eight years. And if you can see the charts, uh, you know, till 2014, the stock didn't do much. But after 2014, the stock has almost created, you know, 30x kind of wealth in next eight years. But now the same stock is 50% down. So it's like a multi-bagger stock, which is 50% down. So is it an opportunity or like, is it a structural downtrend? So we are going to analyze and I would request you to watch the video till the end because somewhere in the middle of the video, I'm going to reveal the name of the stock. And then we'll focus on three primary things. So the first one is, why the stock did well between 2014 to 2020. The second thing is, if it was doing so well, why did it fall almost 50% in 2021? And the third and the most important, what this stock can do in next three to four years. So let us start with the first one, first question. Uh, why did the stock, uh, you know, do well between 2014 to 20? And to do that, let us first look at some of the numbers. Now, if you look at the revenue, revenue-wise, the stock has not done anything great. In fact, uh, in seven to eight years from 2014, if you see, the revenue has been more or less constant, where the revenue has fluctuated between 4,000 to 6,000, uh, which is not a good sign because first there is no growth and then there is a fluctuation in the top line. So, I mean, it is a bit surprising that how a stock with such a, you know, huge wealth creation, uh, you know, the revenue has been fluctuating without any growth, then what did create, uh, you know, this kind of return? So for that, if you look at the profit, then something interesting start emerging. If you look at the profit of the company, you will realize that the profit has gone up from 61 crores in 2014 to almost 300 crores, which is almost a 5x jump in profit in last eight years. And in eight years, five times profit jump, of course, uh, this is a good, uh, you know, kind of performance. And that is why the stock was rewarded. Now, the question is, how did this profit jump happen when the revenue was almost constant and fluctuating? And the answer lies in the margins. Actually, the company was able to improve its uh, profit margins by a very, very, you know, big number. In fact, if you look at the 2014 number, the company, both core EBITDA margin and the PAT margin, they were trading around 1%, 1.5%. And then from that, the company has made a jump of almost, uh, you know, 4% kind of profit margin and almost 7% kind of EBITDA margin. So this is almost a four to seven times uh, increase in the margins of the business. And this incremental margin has led to uh, this kind of 5x jump in the profit. So if you want to guess, maybe you can stop and, uh, you know, you can just put your comments. What do you think? Which stock is this? Don't look at the video. Just put your comments. Try to guess it. You have two, three, you know, hints. It's a player in the logistics and energy space. Uh, second, it's, uh, you know, it has done really well in terms of profit. Uh, you know the revenues, the revenues have fluctuated between, you know, four to 6,000 crore and the profit has gone up from 60 to 300 crore. So make your guess, put in comments. And now I will reveal, uh, you know, what is the stock? So the stock name is Aegis Logistics. So to answer why did the stock perform and why did this margin improvement happen? Now let us go a little bit into the business and let us try to understand uh, what Aegis Logistics does in the logistics and energy space. So if we look at the business of Aegis Logistics, uh, it has two key business divisions. Uh, there is a liquid division and there is a gas division. 
and Aegis Logistics is a 3PL third party logistic company uh, which provides all these services related to third party logistics right from you know sourcing to distribution to storage all of that for oil and uh, you know for a liquid and gas related uh, you know services so some of you might uh, be thinking what is a third party logistic company so let me explain in a little bit of detail and all this originated from you know first party two party third party fourth party and you know there are different uh, meanings to it in terms of how many services could be provided so typically in a 1pl setup it is the business which will do everything they will do the manufacturing they will do the packaging they will do the storage they themselves will dispatch and you know deliver the goods to the consumer whereas if you look at the 2pl business in 2pl business the courier or the delivery is you know is outsourced in a 3pl delivery not only delivery but even your uh, you know the packaging and transportation is outsourced and a 4PL is something where the company doesn't even do manufacturing. So I know many of you would have heard about, you know, Dixon technology. And let us say Samsung, this is just for example, let us say LG is producing TVs. So LG will stop even manufacturing. LG will just do the marketing and the brand management and all. But LG and R&D and LG will uh, outsource the manufacturing. It will outsource the packaging. It will outsource the storage, warehousing, distribution, delivery, everything. So this is what the whole you know, supply chain, 1PL, 2PL, 3PL means. And here Aegis Logistics is there in liquid and gas uh, you know, uh, division uh, where it uh, manages the 3PL, which is storage and transport and you know, the delivery. So uh, let us uh, look into a little bit more detail about the liquid division and the gas division. So coming to liquid division, so Aegis it provides integrated logistic services, uh, basically for liquid handling like chemicals, POL products and all, uh, petrol, POL is petroleum products. And primarily it deals with the storage and you can see there are various locations. So basically what happens, uh, uh, you get a lot of uh, liquid or gas goods coming either from import or export, uh, basically from import towards the ports. And if you look at the ports in India, it's like an, in the Indian map, uh, you know, it's like a necklace structure where the ports are located uh, on the east coast and the west coast. And Aegis Logistics, though they started from, you know, one port, they have expanded into multiple ports and you can see the location and capacity where they are present in Mumbai, Kochi, Haldia port, Pipawa port, Kandla port, Mangalore port. And, you know, these are the ports which are located in the east and west region. And uh, they have a decent capacity where they provide storage. So whenever uh, any kind of uh, liquid chemical or liquid petroleum or those kind of products come from ships, uh, it gets unloaded at the port. And then Aegis Logistics takes care of, you know, the unloading, the storage and the delivery to the respective customers who might be uh, taking some of these, uh, you know, liquid, uh, uh, you know, raw material for their raw material consumption. It could be a, you know, chemical company. It could be a petroleum company. So that is what the liquid division uh, does. Uh, the other division, which is gas division, uh, this is uh, a little more interesting because they here they do mul multiple things. And uh, liquid division is more B2B, but gas division is B2B as well as B2C. And there is one business called, uh, and here they manage the LPG, which is liquid petroleum gas. And they do sourcing as well as the storage, the pipeline, the connectivity, the distribution. They are also into retail business of uh, distributing auto gas, which is LPG gas, uh, you know, uh, cylinders and all of that. So this LPG sourcing, this is basically a trading business where the revenue will be very high, but the margins will be very, very low. So if you see the revenue of uh, gas division, uh, which is LPG division, uh, you will see 60 to 70 percent of the revenue is from sourcing, which is hardly contributing four or five percent of profit. And bulk of the profit will come either from the storage and uh, you know dispatch 
or from the retail division. So let us try to understand how did the company generated that kind of 5x profit. So if we look at the revenue of gas division, uh, we saw the overall revenue of the company was stagnant and actually gas division is the bulk contributor to the revenue. Almost 97% revenue comes from gas division and gas division profit is fluctuating and the big reason for pro, uh, big uh, sorry revenue is fluctuating and the big reason for revenue fluctuation is that gas LPG trading business, which is sourcing business, which is highly fluctuating with a very, very low margin. So that is why your uh, revenue is fluctuating. If you look at the revenue growth of uh, liquid division, there the story is good, uh, where in 2014, they had almost 131 crore of revenue. And every two, three years, if you see this number is increased from 131 to 154 to 183 and now 234 crore. And the whole uh, division has grown at almost a 7.5 CAGR in eight years. So no revenue growth in gas division, it looks like because of the big fluctuation in the sourcing business, and liquids has been doing well. And in terms of revenue, it's 96, 97% gas division, rest is liquid division. So still we don't get uh, much insight into profitability and we know that uh, there was a operating margin play and all. So now let us look at the profit part. Now this becomes interesting. Now when you see at the profitability, the gas division has done really well. So at the same five, 6,000 crore in 2014, the gas division was making 43 crore profit, but now it's making almost uh, 326 crore profit. And I'm talking about uh, EBITDA uh, yeah, profit before uh, tax and interest. And you can see there is a, it's not like a non-linear growth. There is a, you know, stable linear growth happening every two years. And the liquid division, though the profit from 2014 to 19 was almost stagnant, like between 70 to 80 crores, uh, off late, even this division started doing well and it's generating 136 crore, crore of profit. And uh, when we see the profit pool, profit distribution, uh, earlier it was liquid, which was contributing to 62% of the profit and gas was 36%, uh, 38%. Slowly the uh, share of gas has improved and now gas is almost 70% of the profit and uh, liquid is 30% of the profit. So now looking at the margins, actually what has happened is the big driver of the earlier, we might have thought that uh, the gas division revenue is constant, but we saw the profit is increasing there. And the reason why profit is increasing there has been the margin incre increment. So if we look at the PBTI margin of gas division from 1%, this has gone to 9%. And liquid division, it, though it's a high margin business, the, it went through a margin fluctuation where the margins fell from 54% to 43% between 2014 to 19. But off late, this business has also gone through lifetime high margins. And in fact, uh, the first question which would come to mind is, are these margins sustainable? And if you look at the con call, uh, you know, the management speaks about the revenue mix change and the kind of uh, liquids they handle and they are indicating it is sustainable. But the big driver has been the gas division where the margins have improved nine times. And as I told you, uh, this business is divided into multiple uh, subdivisions. And uh, if we see that there is one LPG sourcing, but then there is a storage business and then there is a whole retail business. And actually uh, the share of storage and the retail business has increased over the years. And retail business for them is the higher margin business. Storage also has decent margin. So as they have scaled up the storage and the retail business and in retail also, uh, you know, there is a, there is a, there are auto gas stations and there are cylinders and even there is an industrial gas distribution. So all of that has led to margin improvement and that is why the company's margins have improved and that is why the profit has improved and that is why you see five times increase in profit after over last eight years. So the next question which will come in your mind is, uh, okay, the company grew, but were, was there opportunity to grow and was there, you know, enough uh, uh, you know, market size to capture. And for that, let us get into a little bit about the overall market size of LPG gas, what is happening in the LPG scenario in India. And if we look at the overall LPG consumption over last 10, 20 years, uh, the LPG consumption has grown at a CAGR of 7%. Uh, but what is interesting is uh, there are two parts to it. So how the LPG is getting produced, and then there are two ways. Either we do a domestic production or we are going to import it. 
So there is a demand and there is a supply. And when we look at the demand supply numbers, uh, we realize that the domestic production is not sufficient to meet the demand. And that is where the whole need for import came. And the production is stagnant, but the demand is rising. Like you can see the consumption is rising at the tagger of 7.1%. So that is where the import is coming and fulfilling the gap. And if we see the uh, CAGR growth in the import, uh, that has been almost 16%, which is a very, very decent growth. So if any company is working on the import side of LPG gas, they are going to benefit. And that is what has happened in the case of Aegis Logistics. And you can see now, in fact, the import numbers have surpassed the, uh, you know, the production numbers, which 20 years back were hardly 10% of the uh, local domestic uh, production number. So, and why this is happening? Because India used to consume a lot of dirty fuels in terms of, you know, uh, even if you go to the villages, uh, the mode of cooking is still, you know, very old. Uh, gas stove and all of that and a lot of that is changing because the government of India has changed its focus and it wants to make India uh, uh, to go for more cleaner fuel and that is where the whole uh, Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana and all of that is coming uh, you know which is driving the consumption of LPG uh, and that is why uh, you know there is a uh, increase in the import because of the demand supply mismatch and that is where the opportunity is coming where uh, Aegis kind of companies are leveraging that opportunity, both from logistics as well as from retail distribution perspective. Also, if we look at the history of Aegis, uh, they have been an amazing executor. Uh, just look at the kind of capacity they had in 2014 and now the kind of capacity they have. And you will see that, you know, in 2014, uh, the company was somewhere around, you know, 4 lakh K liquid capacity. And that time they had some pipeline and if they execute expansion pipeline and the expansion pipeline was looking like they will go from 4 lakh to 5 lakh. And when you come to 2021, you see now they have gone to almost 7, 8 lakh. And again, there is an expansion plan which will, you know, take them further. So, you know, one, there is a continuous expansion and that expansion is leading to increment in revenue, increment in profit. And, uh, you know, they have been able to do all these projects, all the expansion executed, and that is how they have grown. So uh, the historically, they have been a very good executor in terms of taking new projects, expanding and, you know, creating, uh, you know, the growth for the company. So now comes the big question. When the stock was doing so well, why did the stock fall by 50% in 2021. So what is interesting is if you look at the chart of the company where, uh, you know, last one year chart, and you can see where the company made peak, it made peak around somewhere, you know, 380 rupees, which happened between June to August 2021. And then from 380 rupees, it fell to 190 rupees, which was almost a 50% correction, brutal correction. And now it is somewhere around 215 rupees. The other thing you will mark is when the first uh, fall happened from the peak, it happened with very high volumes for next two, three days. And that date, if you see this date was somewhere around mid of July, like 12th, 13th of July. So question is what happened? Did something special, something specific happen on that date? Uh, you know, we changed uh, the direction of the company's share price and, you know, it fell. So if you go and try to Google for the news, something important happened there. What you will find is a very specific deal happened. This deal was between Aegis Logistic and another global logistic uh, company called Wopac, uh, where they planned to do a JV. And Wopac was supposed to acquire 49% stake in uh, some of the businesses of Aegis Logistic. And looks like the market didn't like this acquisition for whatever valuations they're being done. And that is where the fall of the stock started happening. So to understand why the fall happened, it is very important to understand the exact deal between uh, Wopac and uh, Aegis Logistic. So, uh, you know, uh, as per the deal, uh, Aegis Logistics, it is a, you know, leading player in India in liquid and LPG, you know, terminal, uh, you know, logistic operation. And Wopac is a global uh, leader in 70 plus countries in the, you know, storage uh, in multiple, you know, type of uh, liquids and gases. 
and they did a jv to form mainly around the storage business where they will take some of the entities of the ages and the wopac they will merge it and then there will be a 5149 kind of joint venture setup so if you look uh, this is little complicated and i will try to simplify it so if you look at the post transaction business structure for ages logistic there are certain businesses which ages used to own earlier and they will still continue to own in full capacity there are certain businesses which ages used to own partially and they will continue to own partially however there are certain businesses where ages used to own completely but now those businesses will be moved in a jv company where ages will own 51% and wopac will own 49% so as i told you uh, they have businesses for uh, you know sourcing uh, which is more trading business they have business for retailing uh, which is the lpg retailing auto gas and you know cylinder that business and the third business is at the port terminals which is for the storage where they have present in you know five six different ports with their tank terminals for storage so bulk of that business is what fell into this o package is jv and even in that uh, there is one port where ages is present in mumbai mumbai lpg in liquid ages wanted to keep this particular port separate from this deal so the final uh, you know structure is the whole retailing business which is a high growth b2c higher margin business ages is going to have 100% stake there it will continue also the mumbai terminal related business whether it is for lpg gas or it is for liquid the mumbai terminal ages will continue to hold 100% however all the other lpg and liquid business related to kandla port pipawa port haldia port mangalore port and kochi port which earlier ages used to hold 100% now this business will get divided between ages i mean it will get uh jointly controlled by ages and wopac where ages will have a 51% stake and wopac will have 49% stake and there was one more uh, business called haldia lpg where uh, uh, ages had a separate tie up with a japanese company itochu and there uh, you know uh, now wopac will also take a stake wopac will hold 24% itochu will hold 25% and ages will hold 51% and uh, the sourcing business which i said is not so important from a profitability perspective ages hold 60% and itoshu holds uh, 40% so that is how the new setup is and uh, the question is so why did this setup happened and what ages gets in return so wopac is going to pay amount which is somewhere around 2500 crore to 2700 crore pre tax which wopac is going to give to ages and in return wopac is getting a share 49% share of the profit which will come from you know these terminal assets and wopac will also bring some of their assets as a part of jv so for ages they are going to reduce their abita by you know parting away 49% of their uh, profit on some of these assets and in return they are getting 2500 and this was the deal which somehow the market didn't like and the stock tanked like anything further there were a few other things also what happened in next 1 to 3 months which were again not a good news for ages logistics but before that let's try to understand this deal uh, what was about this deal which the market didn't like and ages did a specific con call just to update about this deal and if you'll go through this deal it looks like from ages perspective uh, they did this deal at somewhere around fy22 23 times ebitda that is the kind of you know the valuation they got from wopac now if you look the time when uh, you know this deal news came before that ages used to was trading around 380 rupees per share and if you look at the enterprise value at that time it was somewhere around 13000 crore and if you look at the core ebitda of ages you know for this year it has been around you know 387 crores which means the stock was trading at almost 34 times ev ebitda 
Now, let us say, you know, this was the number at that time. So let us say in next six months, uh, because this valuation, this deal has happened based on FY22 valuation, let us say Aegis had, would have grown their profit by 10% more. So I'm taking this 1.1x, which means by FY20, you know, FY22, uh, Aegis would have done 425 crore of EBITDA. And if you give the same 23x multiple, because that this was the multiple at which the deal happened. So the market was giving 34x, but if you give a FY22 for 25 crore EBITDA 23x valuation at which the deal happened, we get a value of 9,791 crore, which is 25% uh, lesser uh, you know, even after, uh, you know, eight or 10 months, or if we delay, you know, uh, for the deal, you know, almost one, one and a half years. And there's an opportunity cost also, because, uh, you know, this money could have gone somewhere else. So the whole valuation of 34,000 crore at 34x looks to me, this is what market sense, they didn't like this deal. And if you see, there's a gap of almost 34, 35%. And that is why, you know, the 50% kind of fall may have happened because of pessimism or, you know, numbers are numbers. Somebody can take the same number in a different way. Also, if you'll go through the con call transcripts, it was like uh, the different kind of bit different valuation stories were there in the WOPAC uh, call versus Aegis call. Also, some of the analysts, they had differences in terms of, you know, how to value. Further, the other bad news which happened was uh, uh, the man who was driving. So basically, there were two brothers who were driving the whole Aegis business. And what I've seen in most of the con calls, the person, uh, Mr. Anish Chanderia, he was the one who was leading most of the con calls. And he heard his sudden demise. And, you know, he left just after one month after this deal was there. So that has been another blow to Aegis. Uh, so that was the second bad news which happened. So because of all of this, I mean, it's very difficult to provide a cause, but this looks like some of the reasons why, you know, the stock kept on tanking. So now the most important question is the stock has fallen almost 50%. What this stock can do in next three to four years for such a multi-bagger stock, which has given almost 30x kind of return and still it is after all of this 50% 50 50 fall, it is almost 18, 19x. Uh, is this 50% fall an opportunity given they have been a superb executor and what are the implications of this deal? What are the opportunities of this deal? What the stock can do and is it a big opportunity to play? So let me try to simplify it and instead of directly getting into valuation and what can happen, let us say if I have a target of generating 20% CAGR, which is a very respectable CAGR, and I want to know that uh, at this point of time, can my investment in ages uh, give me a 20% CAGR for next five years? Because if that is the case, it's a good investment or a moderate scenario, can it generate 15% CAGR at least? So to do that, if we look at the current market cap, which is almost 7,600 crores and uh, the enterprise value is almost 8,000 crore. So to give a CAGR of 20%, this 8,000 crore needs to become 19,000 crore in next five years. And to do a CAGR of uh, 20, uh, you know, 15%, uh, this needs to become 15,300 crore. And uh, why I'm taking these numbers, I'm giving a 20x EBITDA multiple because the current deal has happened at, you know, 23x. So to do this kind of valuation, the stock needs to do a EBITDA of 950 crore. And if it does a 950 crore EBITDA after five years, and if we give a 20x EBITDA based on the current uh, valuation and a little bit of, you know, discount, uh, 950 crore multiplied by 20x, we get 90,000 crore market cap. And if we see the current market market cap, which is 7,640, so we'll get almost 20% CAGR by reaching to 90,000 crore market cap. Now the question is, can Aegis do a bit of 950 crore after five years? That is the key question. Or if you go conservative at 15% CAGR, can ages do 760 crore EBITDA in after five years? So again, remember out of that deal, uh, ages is going to get uh, post tax almost 2200 to 2300 crore cash with them. And this cash can really be used to drive, you know, the growth where currently ages was generating almost 300, 400 crore of cash. So if they had to go for a very high growth path, 
every year this is the kind of cash they would have had until unless they go for debt and they expand but now they are going to get almost 2000 crore plus cash plus they will be generating some cash profit because even though the jv is there they will get 51% share of it and don't forget some business they own 100%. So again, I have tried to extract uh, more and more information from the Concord transcripts to do the calculation. And if you look uh, post this deal, Aegis has almost four different revenue sources. Uh, one is their, uh, you know, the retail business, which is 100% owned. Second is the Mumbai port business, which they still own 100%. Third is the LPG sourcing business, which they partially own. And fourth is this whole JV setup where they will own 51% coming from these five ports where uh, there are eight different businesses between the liquid and the LPG. And also we have some numbers around how much the EBITDA, the, you know, the retail business generating, Mumbai port business generating and all of that. So I have done all the number crunching and the crux is, if you look at all the revenue sources from business streams, you have a LPG retailing business. And uh, if we look at the numbers, uh, we'll find out of the whole gas EBITDA, uh, this retailing is almost 30% of the gas EBITDA. And uh, this business, uh, you know, they are almost doing 120K metric tons right now. And despite of, you know, COVID where, you know, everybody was at home and the, you know, industrial business got affected. Uh, even two years back, they were doing this kind of number, but I have taken this number, uh, which they are doing more than that right now. And the market rate is almost around rupees 10,000 rupees per metric ton. That is how it is. And because it's a retail business, it's a growing business, I have taken a 20% CAGR for this business. So today they do almost 100 crore EBITDA. And with this rate of growth after five years, they will do 250 crore of EBITDA. And it is having 100% stake in this business. Uh, after five years, the Aegis share of EBITDA is going to be 250 crore. So same way I've taken for different, different business sourcing within a very small business. And I'm assuming they will not put their focus. This 30 crore EBITDA, you know, I'm assuming let it be 30 crore. The next is the Mumbai LPG and liquid terminal business. And uh, again, from the con call, you will see that uh, the total retail plus this business right now, it's giving 346 crore EBITDA, which means the current EBITDA is somewhere around 200 crore. And I have taken a 6% conservative growth rate because the, uh, the domestic consumption is growing at 7%. So I've given the same kind of number and assume 6% CAGR. So this uh, 200 crore EBITDA can become 270 crore EBITDA, 100% owned, again 270 crore. Uh, Haldia LPG, again the same 7% CAGR taken and uh, with their kind of stake, I have taken like uh, ages share around the same 50 crore. But uh, the interesting part is this WPAC and JV. And uh, what happened is right now, if you will see this valuation, 248 crore of EBITDA has gone as a part of this JV. So all those five port liquid LPG, they are generating 248 crore of EBITDA. Uh, but what is interesting is uh, there were some expansions which were already happening from Aegis side and those expansions will get completed. So if we take the additional revenue number coming from those expansion plus WOPAC is going to bring some of their assets. If we add all of that, and then if we try to calculate, it looks like that uh, business is going to generate almost 400, 420 crore of EBITDA. And given Aegis has almost so much of cash and WOPAC as a global player is interested for you know driving the growth uh, with their strength. Again, let us assume the same 7% growth rate which, which the consumption is growing. At a 7% rate, this business can do almost 600 crore of EBITDA after five year compared to 422 crore EBITDA right now. So 600 crore EBITDA and Aegis holds 51% share. So on average, 300 crore of EBITDA from this JV will flow into Aegis. So if we add all this profit, 300 crore, 50 crore, 270 crore, all of that, the total EBITDA after five years comes around somewhere around 900 crore. And our target was can Aegis generate 960 crore? No, may not be 960 crore. And I'm, I think I'm trying to be conservative because Aegis is going to have almost 2,400 crore of cash. And every year they're going to generate almost 500 crore of EBITDA. 
So imagine the kind of money they have to drive growth. So if they have enough opportunities, surely they will have the resources to grow. So if earlier they could have grown at X percent, now they can grow at 3X percent, 4X percent, given if there is a market. So cash is not a problem if they deliver and if they're able to execute and looks like 19% kind of CAGR for next five years is possible. So the question is, we are taking the 7% growth number, 20% growth number. Is there really a market for that? And to look for that, let us try to again look into some of the growth opportunities. And if we see the whole, uh, you know, the LPG import number, uh, right now the gap is almost, you know, 16.5. Uh, and we know the domestic production is stagnant and the consumption is going to grow at 7.5%. So if we look next 10 year, 15 year down the line, this import gap is going to increase to, you know, 25 million metric ton. And this is not like, uh, you know, one time cap, uh, you know, capacity. It's like the regular gas consumption LPG, which happens domestically, and that will be a repeatable consumption. So there is an opportunity to tap there, and we know the import is growing at 16%. So this is something which is going to drive the growth and which will need CapEx. And they, they have already come up with the expansion plan. In fact, if you look at the Q2, uh, you know, uh, investor presentation uh, between Aegis and WPAC, there were 12 projects discussed and five projects have been approved. And, uh, you know, there are some brownfield capacity expansions and greenfield capacity expansion. There are plans around gas division, there are plans around liquid division, some of the capacity which was under expansion that has already been completed. Even for the retail, they have plans to expand, like they want to go from current number of stores to higher number of store. It's a high margin business. Uh, new distributors are being signed. Uh, so uh, even on the retail side, things are happening. And uh, once the COVID subsides, uh, it looks the pace of the retail growth business will again, you know, pick pay, it'll pick speed. One more thing I try to do, I try to go through what credit rating agencies are telling and looks like their calculation is also around similar number. In fact, uh, their calculation is a uh, little more aggressive and they are expecting almost, uh, you know, uh, if we look at the number, uh, they are expecting almost 700 crore of EBITDA to flow and they have given a breakup of the 700 crore of EBITDA uh, where 350 crore will flow from, you know, the Mumbai plus the retail business and rest of that will flow from, you know, the JV. So our number doesn't look aggressive that way given they have cash, they have execution history, but there are certain risks because as I said, the, the demise of some of the key stakeholders. So uh, uh, there are few things which I see playing in next three, four, five years. One, uh, I call it temp, you know, the the big uh, tempest before the silence because uh, look, it looks very exciting that two thousand crore of cash is going to come, but think about the situation, how the balance sheet will look like, how the return on capital will look like. This money will not start generating profit or revenues for ages quickly. So for a long time, this money might sit as cash, full cash, then partial cash. So your 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 return numbers like Rossi and all, they will look, start looking bad, but actually they won't be bad. I don't know how market is going to perceive it. Second is if companies holding cash and if they are not able to deploy uh, you know, the market, uh, you know, quickly changes its mind. Second is we know Mr. Anish Chanderia was leading, you know, uh, unfortunately he died. So uh, we know who will be the new man. In fact, uh, one more thing, if you look at the ages profitability, FY20 profit dipped to almost some 220 crore to 100 crore. And one reason was a major ESOP was given to the operating chief operating one of the CXOs, almost 4% stake was given and they expense that profit. So there are a few key persons who have been given that kind of stake. Let's see, you know, if they're able to execute uh, the other brother is there. It's just that in the con calls, he was the leading man. So uh, we need to see how, you know, in his absence, how the execution happened. Third, all said and done execution is the key. And, you know, this is a business which is related to a lot of approvals and, you know, a lot of complexities they have been able to execute, but going forward, they need to execute. Fourth is the big competition. Everybody talks about Adani. Adani is having a port. Adani is getting into a lot of businesses. This is something which is close to them. I'm not sure if Adani always already have a very close competitive business, but you know, these kind of competition we need to, you know, look through given they have an advantage of holding a port. And fifth is because now it is becoming a JV, the profits will flow as dividends from the JV. 
uh, can market consider it's a hold co company and start giving discount though we know that you know still good 40 50 percent of the profits will still fall flow from this main business but what if market starts treating it as a hold co company so these are some of the risks some of the concerns some of the things which may play out uh, when we try to go for that 19 percent journey but let's see how it plays out that is all i had for you and uh, again this is not a stock advice uh, do your own due diligence do your own research and uh, do like uh, uh, i press the like button if you liked our video you like our analysis if you have not subscribed to our channel do subscribe to our channel uh, also one more news we are soon we are going to launch our website and we are going to launch some of the you know education and membership programs so do stay updated for that and i will update you soon thanks for your time and i will see you in the next video